Hello everyone, welcome back to another i2-5D tutorial. In the previous tutorial we created a document in the element planning with all work items of the project as a basis for the quantity takeoff. In another tutorial we connected the work items from the list with the building model objects via selection sets or drag and drop. That means we have brought together the work items of the project with the corresponding elements of the building model. Each work item defines a unique task that will be executed during the construction process. Therefore, we need to do an individual quantity takeoff for all work items to get a detailed measurement of materials and labor to complete them. In this video, we will create the so called QTO formulas for the work items so that I2 can calculate the quantities from the connected building model objects. The quantity query in I2 is the heart of the program. It searches precisely for the quantities in the cut data for each work item when a QTO formula was defined in the element planning. The calculated quantities from the quantity query will be transferred to the BOQ afterwards. I2 offers two possibilities for the quantity query. At first, it is possible to do the calculation out of cut attributes like the volume or other measures that were calculated in the cut software and attached as attributes to the building model objects. Most software tools use these so-called base quantities. The second possibility is the calculation of the quantities out of the geometry of the building model objects. This is a unique feature of I2 and leads to better and more transparent results in the quantity takeoff and an independence from the cut software and the received attributes. In addition, rules for the quantity takeoff can be included in the QTO formulas. So, how do we make these QTO formulas? Here we have an example of a QTO formula for the calculation of the volume of a rectangular wall or column. Don't worry, it looks more complicated than it is. Each QTO formula is initiated with the function QTO. The function, which is enclosed by round brackets, begins with the parameter key that tells I2 which type of quantity we want to receive. This can be for example an attribute, the volume, the number of items or an area. In this case we request the volume. When we define the parameter, we can add conditions to specify the considered objects or the quantity query. The conditions also have a parameter key and a parameter. That's the theory. And so now we are going to produce a couple of QTO formulas. We need to go to the window element planning in the module element planning where we can define the QTOs in the column quantity query. In our first example, we want I2 to calculate the area of the masonry walls of 11.5 centimeters for the masonry works. At first, we define the unit for the area as square meter. Then we start the QTO by typing Q, what automatically starts the input visit that guides through the whole QTO process and proposes parameter key and parameters. You can navigate through the assistant with the arrow keys and select an option by pressing enter or a double click on your chosen element. If you know already what you are looking for, you can type the first letter and the assistant will guide you automatically. In this example, we need the key type and the parameter area max. Afterwards, we need a condition to tell I2 that we only want to consider walls with a width of 11.5 cm. We initiate the condition with a semicolon and choose the parameter key construction element. As parameter we choose depth opt o b b x y with the value 11.5 and add the unit centimeters. The value is entered with a double equal sign and in round brackets. The unit in square brackets behind the number. We close the expression with quotation marks and the round bracket of the QTO function. 
OPTOBB means Optimize Orientated Bounding Box. We will explain the meaning of this and a lot more parameters in the separate tutorials. In our second example, we will calculate the volume of the concrete walls up to 20 cm width. We start the same way, but we choose volume instead of area max, and instead of the equal sign, we use the less or equal sign. The unit in this case is cubic meter. That's the second formula. In the third example, we want to calculate the number of prefabricated beams. As unit, we choose PC for piece and initiate the QTO again with the first letter Q. Then we define the parameter key as type and choose number of items as parameter. Afterwards, we close the function with a round bracket. With this QTO, I2 will count the number of prefabricated beams. As a fourth example, we want to create a QTO formula for the calculation with base quantity. We start again with the letter Q to initiate the function and choose the parameter key type and afterwards we go to the dimension 0 where we choose the parameter attribute. The assistant guides us to a list with all the attributes existing in the model. At this point we need to be careful because we have to make sure that the attribute we choose is an attribute of the objects we connected to this work item with the selection set. Otherwise we won't get a result, or even worse, a wrong one. We choose area and go to the model check where we see that the attribute exists for the masonry walls. But nevertheless, we don't know anything about the value and therefore we need to have confidence in the model and the CAD software. So I too will not do any calculations at this point and only transfer the value we got from the CUT software to the BOQ. That was our introduction to the QTO quantity takeoff. Because this subject is quite complex, we will upload a couple more videos about the QTO formula. A little piece of advice at the end. On the top right side in every window you find the help button with a question mark on it. When you click on this button, a menu opens where you find a collection of manuals for all modules in I2 in the section Documentation. The manual Element Planning QTO Examples contains a collection of QTO examples for the quantity takeoff of different objects. So, thank you for watching us and see you next time.